the first thing we'll have to do to generate the leathering program is we'll have to create a tool in our AlphaCam tool library, which we'll do by going to the Machine tab and then choosing Define Tool. And then we can click on Flat End to select the tool type to bring up the Define Tool menu where we can enter the parameters and settings for our leathering tool. I'll use a tool number of 19 because that's the number that we used in the tool library at the machine. And the offset number has to be the same. I'll just use four inches as the tool length. This is only used for simulation purposes. The correct tool length is set up at the machine. The diameter of this tool is 12.75. And then our machines are set up in inches, the spindle turns clockwise, and we need water on, so we'll check flood as well. Next I'll choose to enter fixed feeds and speeds. For spindle speed, I'm just going to start kind of in the middle of the road. And the same for feed rates, thinking about all the variables involved, including material and brush type. Keep both of these numbers the same. And then we can click OK to save this tool in our AlphaCam tool library. And then type in a name for the tool. I'm going to include the tool position number. Next, we'll draw the piece of material in the actual location on the table, as we normally do. If it's drawn at 00, zero and located at 00, zero you probably don't need the table. I'm going to go ahead and delete mine so we can see easier. Next, I'm going to offset my material about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to offset the geometry and not delete the original. I'll just offset once to the inside and then once to the outside. The exact size of our material isn't critical when leathering. We'll set the very outside offset to the layer Material. So we'll go to the 3D tab and choose Set Material. Then we can select that geometry as prompted and finish to open the window. We're going to leave the material top at zero because we touched the tool off to the top of the material out at the machine. And we'll put the thickness of the stone that we're using as a negative in the material bottom Z. And then make sure Delete Original Geometry is checked before clicking on OK. And if we go into an isometric view, we can see how the geometry is at the top of the material thickness, both where the tool was touched off and also where the brush will be running. We'll need to set tool direction on those geometries. So we'll go to the Machine tab, and we'll choose Tool Directions. Both of our geometries are closed. We want our brush to stay to the inside, and we'll make one pass clockwise, leaving the start point set to No. And I'll pick one of the geometries to apply that direction to, and then we'll change the direction to counterclockwise and select the other one. This gives us a nice crisscross pattern. Now with our geometry prepared, we can start making the program. We'll start by selecting the tool. Find it from your list, then double click on it, and then click once in the drawing to insert it. That'll enable our cutting functions. We'll choose pocketing. And on the types tab, we'll choose vertical and selected. And on the General tab, we'll verify that we have the correct tool selected. And then for the type, we'll choose Linear. And for Final Pass, we'll choose Full. And then under Levels and Cuts, for the Safe Rapid Level, I'm going to use the value that we talked about in the Setting Up the Voyager video. That value was negative 0.223. We enter that value here as a positive number, and I'm going to round it up slightly smaller 
so we don't end up with a Z-positive over-travel at the machine. My rapid down-to value is going to have to be less than my safe rapid value. This is also the amount the tool will ramp down later when we edit the lead in. In this case, the tool was touched off at the top of the material, so the material top is zero. The final depth field adjusts the brush's height from where the tool was touched off. So I'm going to use a value of negative 0.03 for a little bit of pressure. Next, we'll go to the Machine Data tab. I'm going to put a small negative value in the stock to be left. This value represents how much the brushes will overhang the edge of the material. And I'm going to use a little less than the radius of the leathering tool for the width of cut, so I get a good overlap. There's nothing I need to adjust in the tool data, so we'll press OK. And then we'll select one of the geometries as prompted, and finish to apply the toolpath. This toolpath goes back and forth in the X direction. And now we'll make a second toolpath going in the opposite direction. Most of the settings should stay the same, except for the machining data tab. The stock to be left is still set, but the width of cut reverted back. I'll change this to a slightly smaller value than before. This will give us a little bit more of a stagger and this time I'll run the cut direction at 90 degrees. And then I'll click OK to apply this to the other rectangle that tool direction is set the opposite way. Running the tools in two different directions will give me the best overall finish. Now we're going to modify the leads so the tool ramps in to the top of the material. We'll choose Tool Lead In and Out and the method will be manual, and then we'll change our lead in to a line, and we'll also check sloping for the ramp. We won't be doing anything with the lead out, so we'll pick one of the lead ins as prompted, and then I'm going to pull back towards the center of the material with a distance of between the diameter and the radius of the tool, which is represented by the circle. Clicking to select that point. And then I'll do the same for the other lead-in, pulling it towards the center of the stone so I don't get an over-travel at the machine. And we can close out of the lead-in and lead-out window when they're both modified. And we can see that slope or ramp if we go to our View tab and choose a front view and then zoom in. And finally, we can run it through simulation. I'll just choose it from the View tab. I prefer to see it in an isometric view. Then I'll choose Shade Solid before I press Play. Our lead-in ramps in, just like we set it, and we can see all the parameters that we set. Going linear back and forth in the X first, the overlap is about half the tool, and it overhangs the edge about an inch and a quarter, and then goes the opposite direction. So we can close out a simulation and send the G-code as normal. Thank you for choosing Park Industries. Thanks.